Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week eight, lecture two. In this week, we have been looking at the land use land cover and all the attributes and classifications that one needs to remember while discussing rural development. I have to say that the land use land cover data could only be satisfactorily given by remote sensing data. All the other data, maybe the people may um, argue that remote sensing is too coarse or it cannot be done, et cetera. But for land use land cover especially, remote sensing data would be one of the best data that is available. Um, and it directly links to use in rural development. So we will continue the part of discussing the land is land cover. In the last class, we stopped here uh, on, on discussing about the um, land use and land cover differences. Uh, for example, on the left-hand side, you have the land cover, which is basically the cover on top of the land. Um, and it also includes the artificial structures such as buildings and urban areas. Whereas your um, right hand side is how that land has been used. Uh, the white part is where there's no data. Um, however, if you look carefully within the uh, mapping, uh, I just want to make sure you understand that in the left side, it was pixel. Each pixel has a color and that color is coordinated by the legend. You can see the classification given in the legend at the bottom. Here, this part. On the right hand side, the land use, uh, what they have done is they have taken a district uh, or a block level analysis and within the block what is the major crop they have taken if rice uh, so as per the legend uh, if uh, the yield of rice is a particular value let's say the yellow value they put yellow so what happens here is one should remember that how you represent data in remote sensing is very important not throughout the district is going to be uh, yellow color for rice across Rajasthan, uh, but um, it, it is the majority, the yield is the majority in that particular district. That is what you should understand as per the visualization of land use land cover. So same thing here, each pixel, inside the pixel, what is the dominant uh, land use land cover we have seen. This will become more evident when we are going to discuss the aspects of land use land cover and some real time analysis using Google and NASA data. For land cover classification systems, um, it is recommended to use this uh, given by FAO. So this is available on the FAO website, this book. Um, and um, as, as I said that it is based on a particular year. So here the conclusion you this report are considered appropriate at the time of its preparation. So there is a timestamp on land use land cover because it can suddenly change. For example, Nepal was uh, uh, having a lot of land um, and springs uh, before 2015, but after the 2015 earthquake, a lot of springs vanished. A lot of water bodies vanished, right? So uh, you cannot use what map was used in 2014 on 2018 because of the land use land cover change. Uh, it is not appropriate. So always every single land use cover and classification follows a particular time frame. And this is given by the FAO, this book, uh, the software. Uh, and the software, they, they have some links to a book on uh, the classification system. Um, how it has been classified. It's a free open source software. Uh, you can just Google uh, LCC CS FAO and then you will find the links to this beautiful software that you can install. Uh, as I said, uh, it may be for a particular region and a particular time period. Uh, so you cannot use it across unless you know the linkages. Um, let's say, for example, the people consuming kiwi. 
Uh, kiwi uh, has been a big phenomena as a horticulture crop in the recent decades. Before that, kiwi was very expensive. You will only find it in high-end supermarkets, but now you can find it on the road, uh, same as strawberries. Uh, it was only at high-end supermarkets in, in 10 years ago. Now you find it on the roads uh, um, in, in uh, Mumbai, for example. Uh, so the price has come down. The uh, accessibility has come down. Now everyone can have this fruit which is very high in nutrients and uh, magnesium, potassium. So the point here I want to cover is this land cover, which was having kiwis and, and um, uh, strawberries were not mapped 10 years ago, but now these have dominant areas, same as uh, Nasik grapes. If you take 30 years, 40 years ago, grapes was very less in Nasik, but now there's a lot of acreages of grapes. So to make sure that the land use land cover is, is still relevant, you always need to compare it to the current time period or the time period of your research question. So now lo let's look at uh, how the land use land cover can impact water and soil nutrients for rural development, especially when a rural area is converted to urban or peri-urban setting. This place where I'm taking this lecture, Pauvai was also kind of very urban, outside Mumbai city. But uh, because of the IIT Bombay's establishment, uh, around the area, the land converted to urbanization. For example, if you go outside the gate of IIT Bombay, it is called IIT market. Okay, so if you go in and in, it says IIT community, they have nothing to do with what is happening inside because we have our own market. But because of the landmark, it is called IIT um, market. It is called IIT community, IIT park, IIT post office, right? IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay. So the point here is these areas were initially very urban, a lot of uh, crop cover or a lot of trees and, and uh, uh, forest cover. But now it has been changed because of the infrastructures. Uh, the same thing happens in rural areas, but at a drastic, drastic change. Here, maybe some forest was cleared, they say, or uh, some barren land was converted to IIT Bombay. Uh, but in a forested area, if you convert, or a rural area, if you convert, it has implications on the water and food security because the land that was producing rice, paddy, uh, wheat, and vegetables is now converted to buildings. So you're not going to eat concrete. Uh, but um, the produce is coming down, the price is, is um, going up, and the stress on the farmers is going up. So let's see how the, this impact happens. Uh, let's take the first image where you have a normal uh, forested slash uh, 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 rural area where you have uh, rainfall happening, there is, there is land, and on top of it, it is uh, crop cover, forest cover, grass cover. Uh, and because of the cover, there is a lot of pore spaces. Inside the soil, there is a lot of space for water and air to move. So you have natural ground cover. And within that, 20, uh, if 100% rainfall comes in, 25% uh, goes in as infiltration, 25 goes as deep uh, infiltration. So the shallow infiltration is something like soil moisture, the plant use, crop use, uh, trees use. The deep infiltration is what goes into the aquifer. Then uh, after the 50%, 10% goes as runoff. So basically some water is on the top, which is ponded and it goes into the rivers and lakes and ponds. So 10% of your rainfall converts to runoff and the remaining 40% is evapotranspirated, which means evaporation from land surface and water bodies, transpiration from plants and trees. So the plants and trees consume water and it expels water. Now the farmer has done a lot of farming, has used the resources very well, uh, he or she has become rich. So now this case comes up. Okay, This is the case where some part of the land and land cover, LULC, the non talking about LULC change, converting from rural to urban. So now you see that the farmer has become rich. Uh, so maybe the community is building a house. Uh, once you build a house, you, there are other associated things that come with it. For example, you will put a road, you will clear some land for you to um, park your car, tractor and other things. Uh, and also some land in front, if you go to villages, you will see there will be always a land in front of the house. It's just not like 
as soon as you step out of the house, you'll see a field or a forest. There'll be a big land area in front of the house, uh, which has been cleared. It's barren land. So now part of the land is converted to barren, part of the land is converted to house, and the remaining is kept as in uh, as a forest slash uh, crop uh, ecosystem. Uh, now what happens is water comes in, but not all 50% goes into the groundwater and soil moisture. There is a big cut. So because now you have increased the impervious surface as 10 to 20 percent. What is impervious surface? It is a cover on top of the land which prevents water from penetrating, impervious to water. Okay, so as I said, concrete jungles like Singapore, you won't see water flowing into the cement. So there are some technologies where it allows the water to go, but most of the roads, most of the buildings will not allow the water to go through. So now you have limited the or 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 cap the water that can go inside the surface uh, by putting an impervious cover. Okay, it's like a plastic wrap on top of a fruit. If you put water, it won't go in. Uh, same thing if you put a road on top of a soil, uh, the water will not go into the road and into the soil. Very less will come. So there is water coming, but very less compared to the 25%. So if you add it, it's only 42%. There's a 10 to 20% increase of impervious area. And because of the impervious area, the surface runoff increases. Water falls and then it goes uh, along the land into the rivers and lakes. So this is also which contributes to floods, right? Because if you have too much water coming into the rivers uh, and uh, lakes, then flooding happens. So that now you can see that 10% has increased to 20% runoff. And because there's less plant uh, trees and uh, agricultural output, uh, there is less evapotranspiration, only 38%. So compared to 40%, it's 38%. The bulk of the rainfall goes now into your runoff uh, as a change. Uh, it's 10% it's change. Here's only 2% reduction, 4% reduction um, in each 8% in total. Uh, but you can see 10% change. Now you come to the third. Now, again, the farmer has become uh, more and more rich. Uh, the community, entire community is now converting their houses into um, um, inside the village and agroforestry locations. Uh, you could see that instead of one house, now it's three houses. The land has been cleared. More roads have been placed. More impervious cover has been added. So now 35 to 50% impervious layer, uh, which limits the water that goes into the aquifers, ground, ground water and soil water. So now the soil moisture is coming down. Still some soil moisture is there compared to the initial version because you leave some space where the water can go in. Okay, But the deep aquifer, the groundwater will not get enough water. So you see that if you increase the, increase the impervious from 35 to 50 percent, you will have 20 percent shallow infiltration, 15 percent deep infiltration. Um, and now uh, the runoff has increased. So again, all this water is going back to the runoff. There is still high evapotranspiration. Now the question comes is, uh, sir, if the plants are not there, transpiration will come down. Why is it still high? Again, you should remember that it is evapotranspiration. Evaporation is also there. So if you have cement uh, and water falls on it, uh, then water suddenly evaporates. You can see that in the Thar Road, on the highways, if you go, you will see that when, when cars are passing and when it's raining, along the uh, place where the cars are passing and along the uh, high temperature roads, water will fall and at once evaporate, right? So there's a high evaporation from impervious layers, cemented, Thar Roads, etc. So that is why you see a high evapotranspiration and you could see that still there is runoff and some shallow infiltration and stuff. In the last one, now this is like the case I said uh, for the IIT Poway region from barren, it has now become into a fully industrialized, uh, fully urbanized location. Same like the Chennai um, region, the peri urban, which was rural, now is becoming more Chennai. Uh, suburban has become urban. So, in that case, 100% is impervious, 75 to 100%. Very, very less water goes into the shallow infiltration and deep infiltration. Again, these are small cracks, small spots where they have rainwater harvesting and stuff. So you have only 15% going into the ground, uh, whereas the 30% evapotranspiration still holds because um, uh, all the land is now converted to cement cover or impervious cover, uh, and the majority goes as runoff. Now, if you look at it, you can look at how a piece of land has converted across 
rural to urban uh, and how the water and soil dynamics will change. Most importantly, the floods. The floods affect agricultural output a lot because the floods will damage the crops and then there is a lot of uh, crop damage. So all this has to be documented um, and it is documented by using land use land cover. Again, LULC maps play a vital role in scenario analysis. We will showcase that in, in the following lectures. So you could see here that because of the land use land cover change, the water plus nutrients that are in the soil are going to come down, uh, which will affect uh, the productivity of rural enterprises. And also uh, you will see that um, uh, because every farmer wants to live in a good house, which is not uh, something that we should stop them. Uh, but is it done sustainably is the question and or converting a rural region into a fully urbanized region is a question. So moving on, uh, now we have understood the importance of LULC. Now let's come to issues in mapping the land is land cover. Uh, we have spatial issues. For example, the uh, land uh, holding size of a farmer, average land holding size of a farmer in India is only one hectare. So approximately one hectare, 1.08 something. Uh, but the problem here is, uh, your resolutions of the data that you have that has been mapped and put in uh, satellites and other resources is at the order of 50,000, 250,000, 10,000, etc., which is approximately 60 to 90 meters, 30 to 90 meters per pixel. Okay, so uh, you could now understand that one hectare is going to be difficult for mapping of these areas. Uh, and uh, that is one very, very big issue in the spatial terms. In the temporal, um, you could see that uh, there is no seasonal maps. Why is seasonal important? Seasonal is important because you need to know how many crops are grown. Suppose we have an area and in that area you are putting uh, rice, a farmer puts rice. Okay. Uh, after some time, after the rice harvest, before the next rice, they will put a vegetable, a cotton or legume. This is not mapped in the government records. So all the land is land cover you could see is still using a lot of government records for mapping. Uh, but government record cannot go at every single farmer, every single one hectare and then map. However, this cumulatively will have an impact on rural development because water, subsidies, uh, fertilizer, all these are given at rural um, entities uh, level. So if you are not mapping them correctly, then the demand and the use of fertilizers and water in the soil conservation is not taken to account. So there is a lot of temporal issues in the data. I'm talking about observation data and data that is freely available. So the, the goal of this lecture series is for you to understand the potential of remote sensing data and use remote sensing data for your analysis, rural development and other scenarios. So then you have annual. So most of the data are at annual level. But if you look at the examples given here, you can see that this is a current. I can also open the Bhuvan portal and show you. You can see that the current available data is only 2015, 2016, which is approximately seven years from today. Today is March 2023. Uh, and you're looking at a data which is seven years old. How is that? good for doing any policy recommendations or land water uh, uh, conservation in rural areas. It's very, very important. Also, if you are going to look at road connectivity using a 2015 map and you find that farmers or Mandrega has already put down the roads, uh, how are you going to have the maps updated? So these are big issues in temporal level data acquisition for land use land cover in India. Administration boundaries are always differing. Uh, the data do not agree at administrative boundaries. Maybe they're doing at block scale. And then on the map, it is at district levels. They don't know or they don't have the data at district. So they just do some average. So all these map making uh, metadata issues and concerns are not correctly given. As I said, there is a lot of data issues. Uh, uh, especially when it comes to sharing data in sensitive regions. Let's take, for example, the coastal regulation zones, uh, in particular Mumbai region. In Mumbai, you have a lot of 
uh, naval activity along the coast. Um, because of the naval activity, there are allied industries and housing which are being set up along the coastal zones. This has an impact on the rural fishing communities, right? But if you want to map all this, you need them to share data, which is very, very sensitive data they cannot share. Same as in Ganges water basin, the floodplains, uh, the transboundary regions. All these are highly rural uh, development related areas, but uh, getting the data and sharing them is very, very difficult. Um, this is purely because of how the systems have been set up. Not all areas, but at least 10 to 20% of the data is considered sensitive. Uh, and there is no or limited uh, data sharing between the government agencies. Uh, the, the forest uh, cover will not give the data to the agriculture uh, department. The irrigation department will not give cover or data to the urban department because they say, no, your jurisdiction is different. Mine is different. Your area of interest is different. My area of interest is different. So they'll have different names. Same analysis, different names. Okay, so this is a big, big issue. And there are a lot of bias errors, correction errors, sensitivity errors in these government reports and data. There's not much validation done. Uh, as I said, if you're mapping a, a grid, you will not go through the entire grid. You'll go to one point and take a data. But how is it validated? How is calibrated these land use land cover maps is not clear. So we need more information on the validation points. And these maps should be regularly updated, which are not getting regularly updated in the system. So with these issues, uh, what can we do? Uh, we do have some uh, uh, data that can save our um, land use land cover estimation. Uh, and this has been already discussed, but for the benefit of the class and the timing of this uh, slide, I'm going to do it again, proxy data. Proxy data is a secondary data that is collected uh, for a different purpose. However, can answer or support your hypothesis. It's not a primary data, it's a secondary data. It's a data that is not collected for this purpose, but it can act as a proxy. So let's look at this first uh, image, uh, an India light uh, image taken at 2012 and 2016 through NASA. Uh, and you could see that uh, the data shows um, that uh, India at night, uh, 2012 and 2016. And if you just look at it, it could be a luminescence map. Uh, it could be um, a map that uh, gives you color of uh, different areas, uh, uh, depending on the light. But for rural development, it gives beautiful uh, uh, hypotheses uh, support, uh, such as uh, connectivity, road connectivity, electrical power supply, um, and then uh, hotspots, uh, urbanization, land use, land cover, all this can be taken from this data set. For example, you could see that there, you could see some roads which are being lit up. So connected, the dots are connected. The dots are normally connected through a highway and highway has lights. So now you know that two villages are now connected, which were not connected in 2012. Then you also see the hubs becoming bigger. So the main cities are becoming bigger. And then as I showed in the previous map, if Chennai grows big, the regions on the periphery are now consumed or, or um, taken up as city. From rural, it converts to city. Then you have more and more lights in the rural region. Small, small lights, there are more in number, which means rural regions are also getting uh, electric supply. Then you have a pre and post flood analysis using NASA data. Um, uh, for uh, the Brahmaputra River. And this gives you the land use land cover change after the flood, which means the water body, which was on the upper part of the Brahmaputra region is now shifted to the down part. So this part, which was not in water, now is having more water because of the floods and new regions have been charted, up, charted away. So before June 2012, uh, uh, June 20, 2012, this area was considered to be floodplain and agriculture. After June 29, this area becomes water body. You see how uh, a per piece of land has changed from one land use land cover to the other in a time frame, which has been captured by NASA. The other data that I used in my own publication is the GRACE data. And this map shows very clear indications of the groundwater um, 
coverage uh, across Gujarat, monthly groundwater coverage. Uh, and the important aspect here is groundwater changes mostly because of water used for irrigation. So you could see that from here, uh, these three months are using high groundwater for irrigation and you normally irrigate it for a cash crop or a crop that is going to bring you more money uh, which can support the pumping activities. And the last uh, part where we had uh, the uh, change in land cover and land use of the wetlands uh, in the Bangladesh region, uh, which also has been captured by the NASA satellites. So now you could see that proxy data or the data which has been used for one, which has been collected for one purpose, just as an image, can be used for other purposes. And remote sensing data can give you the best spatial and temporal coverage for land use, land cover, and rural development together. Let's see how it can be used. Quantifying LULC uh, change using remote sensing data. This is the water availability between two months. Uh, October, November 2003, you could see that 2003, suddenly the water is depleting, even though there is not much um, summer season. And why is because the winter, so November, November is winter, the winter crop is increasing. So the red color is the winter crop, uh, kind of rubby, but in the winter. So there are two types of rubby crops. One uh, is in the summer and one is in the winter. The winter crop still uses irrigation, still consumes water and pumping. So you could see that a lot of this region where it turns from dark blue to light blue is the same region where you see a lot of activity of water uptake for winter crops. The winter crop rotation two. Uh, then there is a winter crop rotation one, which doesn't consume much, but it does consume a lot of winter crop rotation two. This is very, very important to understand and document. Uh, now you're using two satellites. One is a water satellite. One is a land use land cover satellite. The land use land cover dynamics has been uh, confirmed by water and the water dynamics has been confirmed by land use land cover. You see how two satellite data can talk to each other on the same hypothesis. Uh, the other th thing you could see is here, you could see the, uh, uh, the uh, Narmada uh, Dam, um, across uh, the Gujarat um, region, uh, SSP command area. And you could see that uh, if the height of the dam is uh, increased, the command area gets more water. Uh, and the command area is also mapped as a land use because initially it was barren land, but because of the channelization of water, the land has been converted to agricultural use. And you also put water bodies, canals in the land cover. So now the land use is very, very different because of the uh, more availability of water, which is given in the command areas. Then the next data you can see here is uh, on the uh, x-axis is time period from December 1 to December 13, uh, 2013. And then on the uh, y-axis 1, it is the groundwater storage anomaly in centimeters, whereas on the uh, second uh, y-axis, it is the number of wells. You could see that after 2005, uh, West Bengal liberalized the groundwater market. And so there is more number of wells, which is orange number. You can see that the orange number has gone up, the line and the number, uh, whereas the groundwater, which is blue and the primary y-axis is coming down. So the hypothesis is, as the water uh, now access through wells has increased or the number of wells has increased, the groundwater comes down. But what was the water used for? The water was used for irrigation. So basically your land use land cover is now changing from barren land in the Rabi to cropland and that cropland is consuming more water. So you could see that land use land cover plays a vital role in understanding these water uh, recharge and discharge dynamics. So now we know that satellite data can be used widely. And so what uh, the ISRO and NRSC does, the National Remote Sensing Centers, uh, Hyderabad, uh, Bengaluru, uh, Ahmedabad, all these uh, centers, what they do is they collect these um, satellite data. Here they're using multi-temporal uh, AWIFS data, which is a particular sensor uh, through the, the um, uh, ISRO portal 
and they make maps. So what do they do? They collect uh, and uh, survey data. They use a lot of remote sensing data, which is satellite based, uh, drone based data. They procure a lot of imageries uh, and then do some plot scale surveys, sensors, and then use proxy data to map maps of land use land cover for the entire Indian uh, region. It has very limited key classifications, which is generic in nature. However, the data is available. So you can take the data and reclassify. The data is same, but for example, they have 10 classes. Uh, let's just take for this example. Okay, let's take this example. You say dark green is forest, light green is uh, agriculture, and white is snow. That's it. Just three land use land covers. However, the same coloring can be used for multiple more classes. Let's say dark, dark green is forest, uh, and then light green is uh, forest, uh, deciduous forest. Uh, this is Western Guard forest. Uh, this green color is different from this green color. So those kind of things. So it is up to you, the user, uh, who will tell how many different colors are there or club the colors and then make classes, or which is classification. To move on, Google Earth Pro has uh, a lot of these data embedded. Uh, it can be used on the Google Earth Pro uh, desktop version, uh, mobile version, and the um, uh, online version. Uh, we always use the desktop version that we have shown in the previous um, examples. What we have done is we have demarcated an area. For example, I've shown IIT Bombay um, and how IIT Bombay has converted from one land use land cover to the other, okay? So uh, I can also um, uh, show the same content uh, in a different uh, platform. Uh, for example, we have, uh, we can show how the um, Google Earth Pro has uh, evolved using a lot of data and dynamics, right? So uh, it always, and I also told that you have uh, the the um, time uh, tool that you can use to go back and front uh, in, in time and space and then identify the land use land cover. So uh, let me uh, share my Google Earth Pro and show um, a small example before we conclude. Uh, I'm going to show uh, IET Bombay. Uh, and once we click OK, uh, the map goes in. Right. So this area is the lake area, the water body area as per land cover. Okay. And the land use, this was initially barren, but now it has been used for construction, education, infrastructure, etc. So let's keep this as a stationary um, image uh, and then click on the time frame uh, and you could see that now we are at 2023 uh, 2022 10 the month uh, and then uh, we can go back in time so this is the fourth month you could see that uh, some land is still um, under uh, construction uh, however this water body uh, some part of the water body is not water body why because there's a lot of uh, algal blooms and uh, water hyacinth uh, because of the pollutants, because of the non-managing the water body, right? So now we're going to go in, back in time. Let's go back uh, two years and you can see less uh, number of uh, buildings. Uh, let's go back in time another two years, 2018, uh, which is four years uh, uh, before the first image was shown 2022 now it's four years march 2018 uh, you could see around the land also there are some um, uh, less number of land use land cover uh, there are a lot of cloud cover and stuff which should not be there in the land use land cover which you will be taking apart and i'm going to 2017 you can see that these fossils were not there uh, so this was barren land in land use land cover but now uh, these fossils are also going to be uh, going to go off. So I'm going to go now uh, eight years uh, from the initial image, and you could see that this part is a lot of forest cover, a lot of tree cover, but uh, it will soon be more uh, relevant in 2018, 2008. 
So 2008, 2007, you could see that only half of this circle wing was there. In, in, this, in this time frame, you have a beautiful circle of hostels. Uh, but in 2007, uh, uh, 2003, let's go back, you can see that these lands were still not having much hostels. Very, very small number of hostels. The size was small there and the land around it was reserved, reserved as uh, um, green cover um, and a lot of um, forest and trees uh, were preserved, like these small, small forest lands were still preserved. And the earliest we can go is 2000. There's nothing here. You can see there's no construction, no hostels. This land was barren uh, with some lot of tree cover. So now you could see that how a Google Earth Pro, you fix it on a single land. You can draw the boundary. And then within the boundary, you can qualify uh, saying that, okay, 10% of this land was uh, uh, under forest. 60% uh, was uh, under the institution uh, because IIT Bombay is from 1960s, right? So you have uh, a good 60 years of growth, whereas this is uh, still uh, 40 years of growth is here, right? So your the earliest data you can go is 1985, but it will be too blurred because the resolution is not good. So you cannot use 1985. The best data is 2000 you can use and you could see how this has changed. Uh, the same thing you can see here. This area was totally forested uh, and a lot of water body and um, the area was very, very underdeveloped, a lot of barren land. And if you now see it, uh, you see the metro coming up, you see the uh, uh, good uh, hotels have come up. All these are hotels, the Hiranandani complex. As I said, all this was called, uh, um, was not part of the uh, IAT uh, network. Uh, it was all this is IIT and all you could see here is the IIT market and you could see that in 2000 basically 20 years ago it was nothing so there's no not much development this water body was there now it is gone so it's drained so that this has been converted to land use land cover into barren land um, and all these rural regions have now developed I showed this example in my own village also that uh, with Google Earth Pro, you can see the before and after, uh, and that is basically the land use land cover. With this, I'll stop today's lecture. Uh, I'll see you in um, the next lecture. Thank you.